Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jun Leo from Chu University. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm very happy to have this great opportunity to participate in the Cost Cup. So uh, let me explain my, uh, let me start my talk. Uh, okay, uh, today I'd like to talk about the implementation method for a web app with a rich front end and a Rails back end. Um, before talking the uh, detail in the implementation, um, let me introduce uh, briefly. I am a professor at ITL. ITL stands for Information Technology and Law uh, Faculty of Global Inf Inf Informatics at Chu University, Japan. Uh, also, I'm a board member of uh, HCDNet and and also board member uh, and uh, one of founders of a workshop initiative of language learning. Uh, my major is uh, uh, some studies on the interaction between human and the systems. Okay, uh, let me start uh, this uh, today's talk. Uh, here is an agenda of my talk. Uh, at first, I, I'd like to say, explain about problems and uh, next how to solve them. And, uh, the, and the next topic is, uh, I'd like to show an examples and conclusions. Okay, uh, I'd like to talk about background of my talk. Uh, as you may know, uh, generally in general, Web applications consist of two parts. One is the front end part, and the other one is back end. Uh, front end provides user interfaces and the running on the web browsers, and the background back end provides application logic and uh, also uh, it accesses databases to store users' information or some something some uh, something else. Uh, Ruby on Rails, uh, here in after we, we called Rails. Uh, Rails offers the framework mainly focusing on the backend functions. Uh, therefore, Rails, uh, also um, Rails provide front end functions, but uh, Ruby's uh, Rubies cannot run on the web browsers, so uh, Rails native front end functions, uh, for example, UI components are relatively simple enough. Uh, so, uh, fam famous front end frameworks such as React, Views, or uh, Angular, uh, and so on are written in JavaScript. JavaScript. Uh, or uh, it's derivable uh, for example, um, TypeScript or something else. Um, yes. Then Rails de developers have tried to combine such frameworks with Rails itself, but here is a uh, big problems. Uh, here are big problems. Uh, small problem, but severe one in the Rails development is a frequent change of its specifications, especially the pol policy for handling JavaScript source files are frequently modified. Uh, for example, Webpacker is obsolete in Rails new version, version seven. Uh, from the long, long history of developing Rails, there are many ways to enable JavaScript and CSS cascading, cascading style sheet libraries in a Rails application. Uh, here is the short list of um, available methods uh, <clears throat> For Rails 6, or is version 6, we used Webpackers and 
uh, new version of Rails 7, we can use ES build uh, Webpack without Webpack gem or uh, roll up and or uh, import map functions. Uh, so we 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 have many ways, uh, many options to combine front end libraries and back end functions. So uh, here is a, a problem. Uh, the problem is uh, which one is the best way? Does anyone can answer? Uh, can anyone answer to uh, this question? Um, the current situation is too much complicated. It's too much complicated to combine front end formats and uh, Rails backend. For example, React plus Rails, Views and Rails, or Angular and Rails. Which one is better one? Uh, I don't. I don't have the best answer to this problem. So. Uh, Today, I'd like to show one, uh, one simple solution. Uh, clear solution is to separate two parts, obviously, in front end and back end, uh, clearly separated from uh, each other. The, uh, the, the implementation, method, the implementation method is as follows. Uh, the source files for the front end are completely separated from the file for the back end. It means the files provided by Red framework and the files for front end are clearly separated. Uh, even uh, uh, clearly separated in in uh, the in uh, the different servers respect uh, this uh, different servers uh, respectively and Rails backend is operated in API mode. Uh, Rails, Rails backend can run uh, normal mode and uh, also Rails backend can be operated in API mode. Uh, which is uh, API uh, Rails application is running in API mode, which received the request as a normal application, but uh, it uh, it it may answer to client in uh, JSON or XML. Uh, data uh, so we can use this from the other applications uh, let me explain in the detail to the next slide um, rails api mode is uh, the 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 headless mode in the other words Normal rail applications has model views and controllers. That means uh, normal rails application is running in MVC model. Uh, but however, rails application in API mode has only models and controllers. They don't have their own views. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, requests are same as normal applications, but the uh, Rails application in API mode returns JSON data or XML data. Uh, they return the response in JSON format or uh, XML formats. Uh, here we can uh, here I can show an example. Uh, built by my uh, uh, this application it was built by a, one of my students. Uh, let me change the window uh, sharing uh, 
sharing screen. Uh, let me stop the sharing and uh, uh, next, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sharing, uh, sharing this up application. Uh, is it okay? Okay, uh, here is uh, uh, one example. Uh, one example of the application uh, by implement uh, by implementing the using the method I which I explaining now. Um, uh, this is an emotional analysis of movie posters. And, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is the only uh, Japanese version, but uh, I don't. We don't have any English version cur currently, so oh, let me start this button. Uh, let me start this application by clicking this button, and you can you can evaluate these posters. Uh, each poster is here like this. Um, a, a loser and valence uh, each other for each portals. The user can evaluate like this. Okay. Uh, finally, um, the the evaluation as uh, evaluation will be sent to the server by clicking this submit button. So uh, the result will be shown like this. Okay, uh, this is an uh, an example application which has rich front-end user interfaces and uh, running uh, uh, <coughs> running Rails application in API mode uh, simultaneously. Okay, uh, let's go back to the slide. Uh, let us go back to the slide here. Uh, uh, keynote here, okay. Okay, uh, this is an example. Uh, <coughs> the structure of this application, uh, this figure shows how it works. At first, as uh, the normal application request a uh, request for the pages it is sent to the web server, and the uh, template page is responded to the client. The front client is a uh, web web browser in the client web web browser front end system system start running, and next. Uh, uh, it accesses to API server uh, provided by the backend rail system. And next, the backend rail system returns URLs for posters and randomly chose and responded in JSON format. And next, uh, <clears throat> front end uh, software, uh, according to the, to the information, uh, the front end system uh, issues the request again for the image uh, to uh, the request will be sent to TMDB. TMDB is the uh, the mu uh, TMDB stands for the mu movie database, and the movie database respond. Respond, movie database can respond image data uh, from uh, from their uh, database. But uh, the first implementation when when we when we implement the first application, we uh, we face we face some errors. Uh, this this. Figure show the situation uh, er, when uh, when we encounter the errors. Uh, the error is the error occurs due to the coarse problem. Coarse co uh, is the uh, I, um, I direct you to uh, 
I'd like to try, uh, I'd like to explain the uh, next slide. Uh, what is course? Uh, before uh, explain the course itself, I uh, I need to uh, explain the CSRF. CL, uh, CSRF stands for cross site request forgery. Uh, this is an attack cyber cyber attack in which a malicious site processes a request from another site while communicating with the trusted party. Uh, leading to unintended consequences for the users. Uh, this is a uh, vulnerability of the uh, some uh, situation running uh, some situation for the web application. So to ensure security, uh, uh, web application generally block such accesses except for requests that originate from the page issued by the applications. So oh, we need a special treatment to enable CORS, uh, CORS stands for course origin resource sharing. Uh, here is the structure of the application again. Uh, I, I show the structure again. Uh, as you can see, uh, the front end application issues the request to two parts. One is a, a normal web application, but uh, the second one is API. And the second one is a uh, Rails application running in API mode. Uh, to, uh, even if two website is running uh, in uh, one identical server, but the destination will be separated. So uh, the, we need a treatment for the cross-origin uh, cross uh, resource sharing. Um, in this figure, the access destination of blue path and uh, uh, also, the the access destination of the green path are uh, different. This this uh, this path and uh, this this path are different. Uh, <coughs> blue blue one is the uh, request to the web server providing static contents. Uh, it is running by Apache. And the green one, green one the, uh, is the web application server providing dynamic contents. Uh, it, uh, the, the interface uh, is Puma in a Rails framework. So uh, it needs a countermeasures against CORS course, course storage in the resource sharing. Uh, I'd like to show a solution to avoid the cross CRS problem. Um, essentially, it needs to set up a proper security configuration. Uh, but this time, this is an experiment, so we don't need to take complicated measures. Uh, therefore, I de we decided using a gem rag course. Uh, using a gem rag course, at, at first, uh, we added gem rag course to gem file and then running, uh, we la run band install. And uh, finally, uh, we need to add some configuration to application to uh, dot .rb, uh, application.rb file. Here is the configuration in the application applications.rb uh, like this. Uh, from this line, uh, config.middleware.insert before zero rack course do and arrow do blah 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 and the end. Uh, this means uh, it allows all only all origins and all resources. So uh, we can eliminate the restriction to to uh, 
some restriction for CR C, uh, CSRF. Uh, it means the security is uh, eliminated. Uh, security restriction is eliminated. So uh, that means uh, very. Uh, uh, it considers a very vulner vulnerable situation. But this time, it, this is an experimental experimental implementation. Uh, so I. I choose this option. Uh, here is another solution. An easy solution is to make the front end sources put into public di directly in the Rails application. But I don't, I don't think it's a suitable solution. Uh, it's a very quick hack. So it, this is an, this is not good. This is. I, I don't think it's a good solution. So uh, I don't recommend this solution for you. Okay, uh, let me conclude my talk. I introduced a program to create a web application with rich interfaces using Rails framework and show some solutions. Uh, and examples was Ill illustrated to explain some obstacles to realize the cooperation between the rich front end and uh, back end provided by Rails application smoothly. Okay, uh, thanks for attention. Happy hacking. <laughs>